So thanks, Rudy. I, I, I think that uh, one of the things that I've tried to do in, in building out the foundation is take advantage of, of real experts in the field um, and to bring them in and, and have them help us out. So if you look at our management team, you know, we have you know, Brian Athey, who's our CSO, who's you know, heading up a new data science institute here at Michigan, is a you know, world-renowned scientist. You know, we have uh, Kevin Smith, who is a master of everything. Uh, it just uh, gets everything done. It's been fantastic. Yep. You know, Rudy, who, you know, I've only known you, Rudy, for what, about 20 years? Something like that. Uh, he's just, he's been in the field of, of computational chemistry and computational biology since there were a field of computational chemistry and computational biology and has uh, done a, a great job there. You know, and then we have Michael, you know, on the, on the marketplace side, has done a, a fantastic role there and, in, in, you know, doing the work he does at Roche and bringing his expertise here. Um, you know, Ashley, who's not here uh, today, but uh, reports to the CIO at, at GSK, is the CFO of Pistoia Alliance and is our CFO and treasurer. You know, we've been able to pull together a, a really talented team that kind of does everything that we're doing on a part-time basis. Uh, so I want to thank the, the whole foundation team as well as the community for all the effort they've put in over the past year. It's been fantastic. I'll also point out, uh, you know, Terry Weymouth, who has been, I think, a tremendous foundation resource uh, coming from the University of Michigan, uh, you know, pulling together. I mean, he really is the MVP over there for 1.2, uh, helping us pull things together, get it out the door, and, and make sure everything works and runs. So uh, I want to thank the, that whole team. So uh, we've come to, uh, to almost the end of the day. Um, what, one thing we have coming up at 3 o'clock is uh, the first uh, Transmart Foundation Transmart training uh, class. Uh, that's a real watershed for us in that we really see the need to grow the user base, to grow the number of people that are really experienced and working with the platform. This is the first offering of the course. We've partnered with Rancho Biosciences on this. Uh, they'll be running this for us. Um, we're really looking for feedback on this. I think we have the full 15 slots filled. Is that right, Rudy? So we've got our 15 people. Um, I think if you're still interested and, and you want to kind of watch, I think that's, that's probably a possibility. You can probably twist somebody's arm. Uh, but we're really looking for feedback on this, you know, how we can make it better, how it can work. Um, but we see training as being one way to bring more people to this community and, and to get people that, you know, may have a Transmart deployment at their, at their site, but just don't know how to use it uh, and make that happen. I think training and education, I think when we sat here, Ken said, you know, what was it, uh, education, and there were two other things. Um, <laughs> but I heard the education part. Uh, <laughs> go back to your notes, Brian. Yep. And ease of use. There we go. Push deployments, education, and ease of use. That's where we need. Absolutely. So um, I look forward to, to people's participation in the training and, and everything we do there. Uh, in terms of, of making this conference possible, um, you know, I want to thank Kevin, who headed up our, our, uh, our planning committee. Um, that planning committee consisted, you know, oh, thanks. Sherry and Jay also, uh, you know, gave us their time and effort along with EK. I'm Brian. Uh, David Peruk, who, who can't be here, um, was also a key part of that, lending us his knowledge and experience from hosting the 2013 meeting in Paris. Um, did I miss anybody, Kevin? Ceremone. Forget, don't forget Ceremone. Oh, yeah, well, I was there, too. no, no, no. no. <laughs> No, I think it, uh, it was a tremendous effort. Uh, I want to thank the, the Michigan team, Alex, for helping us out here, Jackie up front, and, and the rest of the crew. Um, it's been, uh, I think, a great three days. I think the energy here has been great. I don't know about you guys, but I'm tired now. Uh, <laughs> so uh, I do want to thank the sponsors who were really, really important for this. And one of the important aspects of what we do as a foundation is, you know, I, I don't know if you've got one of my business cards, but it says that I'm the chief executive officer. Uh, which means we try to do everything on a budget, uh, and our sponsors are who help us do that. We want to keep things open and free, and, our, and having sponsor support has been incredibly important to us. And one last time, I'd like to thank our sponsors, you know, our gold sponsors, Rancho, uh, Converge Health, and Thomson Reuters, as well as our host site, University of Michigan. Fantastic. Thank you very much.
uh, Cognizant, uh, our bronze sponsor, um, our dinner reception sponsors, BT Global Services and The Hive, thank you very much. And our break sponsor, Elevata, and I think we accomplished our goal. I don't see any more of those notebooks around. So uh, thank you very much, Elevata, as well. So the, the kind of themes that, that I heard here that I think are important to us and then we're going to take away, um, I think I mentioned before the management team is going to meet this afternoon and then tomorrow as well to digest everything that we've heard here and to really turn that into action plans uh, and things that we can do that are measurable and, and, and uh, manageable. Um, the themes really do fall into these three C's and I, I like the fourth C and I, I know that came from Jay. Um, the content areas, you know, really to focus on building content and, and making things happen here. Um, you know, activating and empowering, you know, the new working groups around key deliverables. Uh, I like this whole idea of a catalog of available content that doesn't have to be free and open necessarily, but if we have a catalog, we know where to go and who to talk to. And if we can have a collection of what is free and open, we, that would be fantastic as well. And these are things that we need to work on. And I know that we, you know, with Brian and, and Ceremon and Julie, we've got the right group to help coordinate that. And, I'm going to bet that Julie is going to be a, a, a motivating force in making some of these things happen. I really appreciate that effort, too. On the community side, I think community is really about growing this group. Um, I'm hoping when we meet here, uh, meet together next year in Europe, um, our meetings alternate between Europe and the U.S. Next year when we meet in Europe, which right now is looking like Basel, but I can't say for sure. Um, when we get together, I, I'm hoping that we've increased by another 25%. And uh, that is the job of the community committee uh, through what we're doing in training and outreach and communications, uh, et cetera. And also falling into this, I think one of the key things, what's been really successful for us over the past year have been these hackathons and testathons and sprints of really engaging and working together in this collaborative model. You know, I think, uh, you know, talk, talking to Cal a little bit, is, is Cal still here? And he have to run for his plane. Talking with Cal, I mean, we have a very unique open source community, and I think the word that kept echoing in my mind through this is collaborative. You know, we don't have an architect or a dictator or somebody saying, here's what we're going to do. We have, like we had in our hackathon, we have people coming together that are smart people, working on a problem, coming up with solutions, and then through that ecosystem of development, uh, we have a selection that happens, and in fact, we find features that are really useful, and as they become useful, we roll them back into the code base. I think that's a, an incredibly active and dynamic environment and uh, is what powers us. So over the next year, I, I think we'll, we'll, we're going to focus on a new kind of hackathon, this data hackathon that, that, uh, that Ken Kubota proposed for us. I'm looking forward to doing that. Um, we'll see who else we can get involved in that. I'm, I'm going to try and get Orion BioNetworks involved in that. If we have Michael J. Fox, Orion, maybe we can get one other in the neuroscience area, that would be a tremendous you know, data hackathon. Um, on the code side, uh, I think one of the great things I've heard here is, is a closer relationship with I2B2. Um, I2B2 is the heritage of Transmart. You know, we've kind of went our separate ways, and I think like a lot of things, we, we, there are ways to come back together, in fact, really facilitate research uh, as we're going forward, and I think that's an important thing for us to do. Um, you know, there's a lot of new genomic information, new genomic data coming forward. We need to be on the forefront of this. Um, you know, I, I look at what's happening with you know, the UK Genomes, Genomes England initiative with what's happening in this country uh, with the speed. I, I don't know if you guys saw this. I should have grabbed a picture. But um, they've just come out with a nanopore sequencer that is basically the size of a chocolate bar that plugs into the USB port on your laptop. DNA sequencing at your laptop. I don't know about you guys, but when I was a graduate student back at the University of Minnesota, I used to pour sequencing gels and do sequencing. It's like imagining nanopore sequencing in a peripheral plugged into your laptop blows my mind. It's amazing. Uh, but that's the reality of where we are. And sequence information is growing at a multiple of Moore's law, you know, looking at the decrease in cost and the increase in capability. That's stuff that we're going to have to really be able to deal with. Not just full genome sequences, but you're looking at tumor genome sequences, you're looking at RNA-seq and, and microRNA-seq, et cetera. Lots of stuff there. So having that is important, um, but I do think that one of the barriers that we're going to have to focus on as a community coming forward this next year is getting data into the platform. And it sounds to me like we have some, some real you know, great workers out there in Rancho and at TR and, and other places that are, are you know, doing the heavy lifting here, but we need to make that heavy lifting a little bit easier so we can get more done. 
It's not that we want to, don't want to work as much. We just want to get more for our work. And I think that's a real focus area for us. And if we can include in that, you know, means of data sharing, you know, I, I heard a lot of themes out of UEK on, on data sharing. I think that's a thing to focus on. And I do believe that robustness and maintainability around 1.2 is, is critical. Um, we need to get the word out. And you know, I've talked to people that have heard of Transmart before and they play with Transmart before. And they say, oh, 1.2, so what? Um, 1.2 is an amazing you know, uh, evolution for Transmart. It's, it's not your grandfather's Transmart, right? Uh, and we need to get the word out to people that we have a robust and maintainable system and get it adopted. You know, to EK's point is making sure that, that people know this is the long-term support platform for Transmart and it is sustainable and robust is, is really key. And each one of you are an advocate for that. And finally, that fourth C, um, you know, one of the things that we've done is, you know, build the foundation uh, on a bit of a shoestring and, and get it going forward. We're making that happen. Um, but there are a lot of things that we want to do collaboratively that we need to find funding for, reaching out for grant funding, philanthropic funding, other kinds of funding. I see the foundation as a condensation nucleus for bringing new funds into this community that empower us to create new content, to create new code, uh, and to really empower the community. And so that's something that we at the foundation will work on is reaching out and finding ways to keep bringing you know, funds and effort and, and investment into this field and into this platform. So this is the, what we're going away with, uh, plus a lot more. Brian has a whole lot of notes that we're going to go through. Um, in terms of, of coming up with what the foundation will be doing for you over the next 12 months. But um, from that perspective, I think it's just been incredible to have you here and, and participating in this as well. Um, these are just some stats from the meeting uh, today. Um, we, uh, two weeks ago, where were we, Kevin? At 80 registered attendees? Or, and uh, you know, we didn't know quite how many people would come, but we're over 130 attendees here. So thank you all for coming. We had uh, 44 organizations represented. Um, we had 70 sessions uh, over the three-day period, which I thought uh, went incredibly well. There's some amazing talks, and there's some, some that I missed that I'm going to have to go back to Lanyard and catch up on. Uh, we had four great keynotes, 10 science talks, 10 technology uh, presentations, um, you know, a whole lot of, of in interesting information. Uh, the 3C working groups really looked to me like we were starting to take off there. My direction to you is to make sure that we keep those, the momentum going with those working groups. That is the way every one of you here has a voice in what we do collectively, is let's get that information up, let's get it out into our strategic members at the board level and, and execute against that. Um, the hackathons, I think, are, are incredibly good and it's with some cool new features you guys have done, that's great. Uh, I love seeing that stuff happen. Um, the panel presentations around deployment and roadmap, I think we came up with some really good information and, and uh, insights. Um, I, I think, uh, what would you guys think about the award ceremony? Yay? Yay? Did you like that? You know, you guys who got awards, you guys should at least be clapping. Yeah. <laughs> so Rudy, uh, Rudy put an awful lot of effort into, the, into that. Uh, we got some great nominations from the community. We took our best shot at, at sort of a data-driven way of doing that. I hope it worked out well. Um, love your feedback on that and how we can do it better next year, but that's something we want to continue doing. We think that's a really important thing is to recognize those people that are contributing to our community. Um, and then the group dinner and then uh, what, what happened with Michael J. Fox. One of the key things that I was asked multiple times at our board meeting on Tuesday is, you know, how do we reproduce Michael J. Fox? How do we get another group like them to come in and do exactly what they're doing? And I said, the answer to that is you guys. You know, how did, Mike, how did, how did uh, Ken Kubota come here in the first place? You know, Jay was an advocate for the platform, working with the platform, you know, recommended that. He connected with other people in the room uh, and really felt that there was a community here, there was an effort here, there's a platform here, and made that decision to move forward. He's an early adopter. We need others like that. You know, we have you know groups that have come along like this, like One Mind for Research, Orion Bio Networks. But Michael J. Fox is really the highest profile foundation to come on board so far. Where's the next one and the next one? That is what we need to do. Each and every one of you need to be an advocate for the next person that picks up the phone and calls you and says, "Hey, I've got all this data. What should I do with it?" Right? Well, it should be in Transmart, and you should make it available. Right? So. Uh, that's a really critical thing. So I think that's that's fantastic. So 
Uh, the last thing I, I wanted to put up here is, is just the slide. Again, uh, this is a tremendous group of people uh, that, that have come together here at the University of Michigan. I'd like to, to thank the university again for hosting. I'd like to thank each and every one of you for coming. Don't forget your, your jumper. Uh, I have to make sure I speak English, not American. Uh, make sure you don't forget your jumper. If, you, uh, if we didn't have your size, uh, leave your name and, and address with Rudy, and we'll take care of making some more in the right sizes and get them to you, okay? Good? So again, thanks everyone for coming. Don't forget the training. We'll see you next year.